from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. The next two people who will walk on this stage are total dorks. And they are proud of it. That is because author Rachel Renee Russell and illustrator Nikki Russell are the creators of the best-selling Dork Diaries! Thanks to Rachel and Nikki, millions of people in 37 different languages can proudly say, Dorks are cool! They are here today to introduce you to a new character who you will love as much as Nikki Maxwell. Their new book is the second book in a new series. It's right there, he's holding it up loud. The Misadventures of Max Crumbly II, Middle School Mayhem. Max sometimes gets treated like a zero, but deep down, he knows he's a superhero. Be sure to pick up a copy at the Politics and Prose Shop, and then have it signed between 2.30 and 3.30 p.m. Let's learn more about Max and how we can all become the superheroes we've always admired. Please give a warm welcome to Rachel Renee Russell and Nikki Russell. Hi everyone, how are you doing? Good. As you've heard, I'm Rachel Renee Russell and I'm the illustrator of Dork Diaries. To advance. Oh, I have to do this? Yeah, they have to bring it up here. You just put the arrow key down. Okay. You can tell me I can sit here and I can do it. Okay, then you can sit here and do it. I'm the author of the book series Dork Diaries and The Misadventures of Max Crumley, and I'm very, very, very excited to be here. <laughs> to my right is my dorky daughter, Nikki. <laughs> and Nikki is the illustrator of both Dork Diaries and The Misadventures of Max Crumley. So, um, we're going to talk a little bit and I'm going to take questions from the audience. In the meantime, Nikki is going to be back here at her sketch board and she's going to be dorkifying members of the audience. Do you guys want to know what a dorkification is? You can tell me out loud, what is it? Yes, she's going to be drawing random members of the audience. And right before we finish up, she's going to show um, her drawings, and then we'll have to figure out which of you people she drew. So that's going to be a lot of fun. That's what we'll do like the last um, 10 minutes or so. So let's get started. Nikki, you'll get busy. Um, I'm really happy to be here today. And actually being an author is a dream come true for me. I'm originally by trade an attorney and actually a consumer bankruptcy attorney. So in my other life, if you had a lot of financial problems and a lot of debt, or if you had a disaster that happened to you, be it a, sometimes the divorce or um, a medical issues um, and you were in a situation financially where you couldn't pay your bills, well you would hire me and I'd make them go away. But I do enjoy being um, in a t in an author um, much better. It's a, it's a lot of fun and I get to work at home. I get to work with my daughter, Nikki, and then I have a, a second daughter. Her name is Erin and she helps write. So this whole um, adventure is a dream come true for me. So do we have a microphone in the audience where I could take questions? The, the microphone is... 
And one here, okay. Okay, um, we'll go with the young lady in the navy blue jacket. You can stand up. On your Dork Diaries page, you said you're gonna come out with a movie. When is that gonna come out? <sighs> okay, the Dork Diaries movie. Um, that, okay, our, our film rights were optioned by Lionsgate Films, and you've all heard of Lionsgate, I imagine. Um, they are the famous studio behind um, The Hunger Games and Twilight and Divergent. Well, they did, in fact, option our movie rights, but unfortunately and sadly, there is not going to be a Dork Diaries movie. <laughs> Now, I could talk about this for the next hour, but I'll just spend maybe a few minutes um, discussing it a little bit. And again, I'm very disappointed. I'm sure you guys are disappointed. Um, as you heard, Dork Diaries has sold over 30 million books. Um, we've been translated into uh, 37 languages, um, but apparently Lionsgate feels that in spite of all that popularity around the world, Nobody will turn out to see the movie. Um, I was told that they did research, and based on their research, um, they felt that our fans and families you know, would not be interested in seeing the movie. So that was the first reason why there's not a Dork Diaries movie. Um, I feel that you people here, and again, there's girls, 8 to 14 years old, and boys 18 to four, 8 to 14 years old deserve to see themselves in movie theaters. If you agree with that, let, let me hear you clap your hands. Yeah, I agree too. Now the older kids, you know, kind of get all the fun and excitement. Um, Lionsgate has made movies and have done a really good job. I'll give them credit where credit is, is due. Um, they've done a wonderful job uh, making movies for teen girls, and teen girls would, uh, I would say, probably be 16 to 18 years old. Um, they've done uh, Twilight and Hunger Games and whatever. They've done actually a pretty good job covering um, the young boys here. They've released a couple of movies for the 18 to 14 year old demographic for boys. But when it comes for, to girls, um, there's been a problem. That's why the whole thing with Dork Diaries has been so disappointing. The last movie that Lionsgate has made that featured an 8 to 14 year old girl, like a lot of you here, was in 2006. That was 11 years ago. Some of you probably weren't even alive uh, 11 years ago. Uh, but they did release a movie and it was called Aquila and the Bee. How many of you have heard of that movie? Yeah, that's a good movie. And it, it features an African American little girl too, so I'm really happy about that. But the last um, full release, when I say full release, movie that's been put in the theaters and stayed there you know, for several weeks or several months, not a limited release. A limited release is a movie that goes into the theaters for one week, and then they pull it, usually convert it to a DVD, and then sell it in stores. So the last full release that Lionsgate has made for you people here, especially the girls, was in 2006, and that was Aquila and the Bee. And that a uh, movie did feature a main character um, that was in the um, age range that you guys are in, which is 8 to 14. So, so what do I want? <laughs> you guys are sorry you asked the question about the movie, huh? Because I'm going on and on and on. But it's, it's just, I'm really passionate about it, and this is something I wanted to see happen. Um, my message to Lionsgate is that they are not going to lead the way in getting movies made for your demographic and you people here. They're not going to lead the way. They need to get out of the way. <laughs> you should not have to wait another 11 years to get another Aquila and the Bee or um, any type of movie that features girls in your age, age range. Now. Um, I'm not up here whining and moaning because there's not going to be a Dark Diaries movie. If Lionsgate does not want to make a Dark Diaries movie, fine, I'm fine with that because it will get made. <laughs> there are a lot of people that would be interested in that. Um, but what I don't want, um, if they're not going to make the movie, fine, they can return the movie rights and we'll find somebody that's really excited about it. Um, I do not want to be packaged into a che cheap digital TV show because you deserve to see yourselves in movie theaters. I do not want to be a limited release, 
which means it's in the theaters for one week and then packaged into a DVD. Um, and if, again, if they're not interested in the movie, which is you know, what we signed up for, then they're not going to lead the way, then get out of the way. Give us our movie rights back and we will get a movie made for you guys. How does that sound? <laughs> exactly. So anyway, um, I've been kind of doing a lot of research on this issue with all the things that are going on in the world today. You know, now I have to worry about, you know, my fans being able to go to a movie theater and see themselves. Um, but anyway, Gina Davis, and Gina Davis is the famous A-list actress, um, has an institute about gender in the media. And it's just a little short 90-second uh, video, and I'd like to share that with you guys. my message to girls especially and boys if you can see it you can be it and that's why it's important to get um, uh, movies in theaters that reflect uh, all of the American population so let's get back to questions again yes who inspired you to write about Nikki Maxwell who inspired me to write about Nikki Maxwell my two daughters are very dorky and they were very dorky in grade school and in middle school, and they'd come home with all types of stories. Sometimes they'd have good days and sometimes they'd have bad days, but um, when I decided to write a book, I decided to um, write something that would be a little different and that would inspire other kids that were dorky like them and po possibly having a hard time at school. So as you can see, Nikki grew up to be a very smart young lady. Actually, by trade, she's an elementary school teacher. She taught uh, second and third grade. So, uh, so my inspiration for Dork Diaries um, are my two dorky daughters, Erin and Nikki. Let's go over here. Um, yes? Why did, why did you make the stories Max Crumley? Um, I made The Misadventures of Max Crumley because whenever we would go out and do book signings, we'd have lots of guys who were Big Dork Diaries fans, but inevitably they'd always say, well, why don't you make a book with a guy main character? So um, I was inspired to make The Misadventures of Max Crumley for all of my um, guy Dork Diaries fans who kept asking me over and over and over to um, write another book series that had a guy as a main character. Yes? What's your favorite book in the series? Um, my favorite book in the series is always book one and the newest book that I'm working on. So we just finished Dork Diaries book 12 probably about a month ago. So right now my favorite book is Dork Diaries book one and Dork Diaries book 12. We'll be starting Dork Diaries book 13 in probably a couple of weeks and then more than likely that's gonna end up being my favorite book as well. Yes? What made you decide to have Max as the prey and not the predator? Oh, that's a very good question. So um, probably, again, 
raising my daughters, and they were the prey and not the predator. So as a mom, um, when they would come home and they'd be having problems, I thought, well, what am I doing wrong as a parent? You know, maybe if I was a better mother or if I was more supportive, but it's not about that. There are just um, children um, that Aaron and Nikki ran into and a lot of you will run into, and they have the issues. It's not you or your parents or your family. They'll try to make you think it's you, but no, it's um, other people have personal problems in some instances and then they take out their frustrations on you. So only because I could relate to um, a person being bullied more so than a bully, um, I wrote it from that perspective. But that's a very good question. Yes? When are you planning to have the next Max Crumley book come out? Um, the, the newest Max Crumley book, and that was The Misadventures of Max Crumley Middle School Mayhem, um, came out just in June, so it was released a couple of months ago. I'm going to see if I can find it on here. Ah, let's go this way. Oops, did I mess it up? Well, anyway, um, I was going to show you the the um, cover. But anyway, Max Crumley, yeah, you guys, she, they're holding it up. It's the black book with the silver spiral on it. Uh, that was just released in June of 2017. Our next Max Crumley books will be coming out um, more than likely in June of 2018. Okay, we'll take two more questions and then Nikki's going to be ready. Okay, we're over here, I think. Why did you make one of the first deck per perspectives from the diary instead of just from like a third person point of view? Um, I love writing from the diary or first person perspective because that way you can get into the writer's head if they're feeling happy or sad or angry um, in first person which is you know kind of the diary uh, perspective you can really relate to how the person is feeling so and then diaries are cool and it's always fun to sneak and read a diary so I thought that would be a fun um, angle to approach the book from. And our last question. How long does it take you to like do the illustrations and like write it? Um, we write and illustrate the book at the same time. In some cases, I'll write a chapter and then I'll give it to Nikki to illustrate. And then once I've seen the illustrations, it usually blows my mind and I go back and rewrite the chapter. So we kind of do them both at the same time. And I would say it takes probably about um, four to five months to do a complete book. So that's it for our questions. And Nikki, are you ready? Well, she has one more. You want to finish that up quickly? Maybe we'll take one more question while she's finishing things up. Um, are you ever thinking about making a book about Brandon? Um, that would be very cool to do. So yes, I am thinking about that, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yes? Um, how did your daughter Nikki get so good at drawing? That's a really good question, and I'm always excited to talk about that. Nikki started out taking black markers and writing all over her bedroom walls. <laughs> Don't try this at home. But she loved drawing and sketching so much that when she was like four, she had the nastiest, ha nastiest habit of drawing on walls. And when they were newly painted, they were her favorite. So after that, um, when she got a little older, probably about seven or eight years old, I put her in a um, summer camp and it was um, for, we're originally from Grand Rapids, Michigan, and it was called Kendall School of Art and Design, and they ran a summer camp for kids. And Nikki went to that summer camp from eight years old all the way up to her senior year in high school, which is 18 years old. That's all the training she's had. So what's the message? The message is you can become brilliant at anything that you dream to do as a young person. Nikki's skills did not come from college or you know what she's done as an adult. It all came from her summer art camps from age 8 to 18. And if she can do it, all of you guys can do it as well. So I think she's ready.
<laughs> she already knows who she is. Come on up and get your picture. We're going to ask all of the um, kids with pictures to just line up across the front um, on, on the floor here and hold your picture up so everybody can see it. This next one belongs to a gentleman who's seated in a purple chair with an orange t-shirt and a gray jacket. <laughs> Come on up and get your duckification or crumblification. And last, but most certainly not least, this stuck up vacation belongs to a young lady seated in the front in a pink jacket and blue capris. Come on up and get your dork up vacation. Thank you so much, everyone. I wish I could dorkify you all, but that's all the time we have. Thank you. I'd like to end by just saying two things, and it's the theme of our books. If you're a big Max Crumley fan, we would like to inspire you to be the hero you always dreamed of. And if you're a big Dork Diaries fan, we always say, let your inner dork shine through. Take care. <laughs> This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.